Well, Monday is fall, which is a big time for trout, bass, fishing. And uh, I've been asked several times, you know, how do you rig up for your spot tail bass or for your uh, speckled trout, even flounder. I just wanted to show a quick rig. It's pretty universal. The uh, one thing I like about it is the depth is adjustable. I really like uh, in the area we're in, we may be fishing 14 feet deep, you may be fishing four feet deep. So I want to be able to adjust my float. And this is just a basic, simple rig. Uh, you can get more elaborate. We can go with either the braid or we could go with fluorocarbon, but for someone who just wants to go out, have a, have a quick rig, everything is ready right there. Um, this, this is my go-to rig. So one of the first things I do is I'll go ahead, I usually have about 20 pound monofilament line. I'll go ahead and cut a little piece to use later for my leader and I'll set it off to the side. The next thing I like to do is you have to have something to, uh, which is the key to stopping your float. Bobber stopper, whatever you want to call it, a uh, float stop, cork stop. Uh, the ones that normally come in the package are like these. It, it's a knot, and they work well. We've used them for years, but I tell you, there's this new this new thing out that I've just started using, which are these rubber type uh, float stoppers, and they go on really good, and they don't slip quite as quite as bad. And the little frayed ends that sometimes when you want to roll your uh, stopper up onto the reel. They don't get uh, hung up or tangled up in your line. So I really like these. When you buy them, you'll get a set. There's several little stoppers on here. Uh, they come in really good colors. I like that because they're, uh, they're black and red, of course, which is Georgia Bulldog colors. We always like that. Uh, but with that being said, what you will do with this stopper is it's got a wire loop and this rubber grommet looking thing here is, is going to be your stopper. So what you do is you put enough line in through the little wire circle so that whenever you pull the stopper on, when I put these cork stoppers on, if, you, if you'll uh, wet them a little bit, put it in your mouth, they tend to slide on a little better. So you go through the wire eye there, get you enough slack slide that on and see how it goes up onto the uh, the monofilament well then I'm gonna slide it on down until I get to the monofilament slips out now the stopper is on the line and I just move the rest of my stoppers out of the way so there you go you've got your cork stopper the next uh, thing we put on will be our, our float, bobber, cork, whatever you call it. And I really like these Billy Boy. They're, they're not as long as the, uh, the old uh, traditional type, which, you know, which are still fine. But I like these Billy Boy bobbers, uh, the number 45. The reason I like the 45 is I've done several little tests and a one ounce sinker will keep this number 45 perfectly straight. So I can always remember to get a one-ounce sinker, number 45, Billy Boy Bobber, and I'm good to go. The Billy Boy Bobbers, they have your beads in there with them. Uh, when I think of the beads, I just think it's a little bit of a shock absorber. So you want to have your bead on, and what that's going to do is protect the, uh, the cork. When it goes into the water, the cork's going to be slammed, and when it uh, when you set set the hook, you're also going to put pressure, you know, on the cork. So I've got my cork stopper. Now I'm going to put my my bead or what a little shock absorber. I'll put the clear one on there, and I'll go ahead and put one of the orange beads. And all this does is keep for whenever I. Uh, set the hook or, or cast it, it doesn't damage that end of the cork. I want to keep my orange to the top. The other thing I like about the, the Billy Boy corks is your line feeds straight through. Just kind of a no hassle threading 
run it on up. Then I'm going to do the same on the other end. I'm going to make sure I have my uh, little shock absorber beads. On right here. So that now whenever the uh, sinker hits it, it'll be fine. Once you get this in place, I'm going to put my, uh, my sinker on. I usually put the swivel to the top. I believe that's a preference either way. I put it to the top. Uh, when the shrimp or whatever you're using for bait begins to spin in the current, it won't tangle up all your monofilament line. I used an improved clinch knot. Do about seven wraps. Down tight. Go ahead and take the little tail end off. And now we've got that much. So now I want to come back with my uh, my leader. And you want to secure, you know, about a, I would say an eight to 10 inch leader. If it's too long, it tends to get tangled when you cast. So you've got your leader. Again, I do my improved clinch. Secure it down. Trim off a little bit of that tail. And that's probably more than I need. So I'll take that up from the, uh, when I put my hook on. One, two, three alt kale hook. Uh, this I believe is about a two. Eagle Claw, these are three over here. I've got a list of all the uh, supplies that I use in order on, um, on the video and I'll have those for you. But uh, this is the three alt kale compared to about a two alt kale. But again, put your hook on. Like I said, I've got a little bit more slack than I want so I'm gonna take it up. About seven wraps. So the whole rig now is tight. Trim off a little bit. Now you've got your rig. You have your stop, port. Now I can adjust my depth. What I'll do, is, you know, if I'm using a six, seven foot, say I've got my seven foot rod, well, then I know that I can run this to the end of the butt of the rod, and now I'm fishing seven feet deep, three feet deep, about half that distance. And all I'll do is slide this stopper up and down as far as I want to go, and that's going to limit the depth that I'm fishing. It's really good. Uh, it's a good idea for triple tail, flounder up next to the bank, your deep water bass or your trout that happen to be in, in deep water now that, you know, it's just now cooling off some. Well, it's supposed to be fall come Monday. But it looks like it's uh, still running around 88, 90 degrees. So there you have it. One thing I would like to share, just a little bonus tip. You probably notice when you're traveling with your tackle, you put it in the back of your truck, everything tends to bounce around. 
and I put this uh, picture of this as well. What I found is this is some sort of flower making craft thing. But what it is, it's just almost like a bag tie, bread tie. It's got a little cutter on it. So now I can secure my uh, line to my rod and keep it from bouncing around simply by cutting a piece of this wire. I'll put it up here, usually around where the uh, where the sinker is. It's going to cause me the most bouncing. I'll twist it together. Now I can set it in the back of the truck and it's not going to bounce around and get all over my other rigs, get onto your bottom rigs and everything else when you get there. Put it in your boat. Pull out. Tangle free. All right, I hope this was some help. If you're new to saltwater fishing or uh, just wanted a good, easy way to have a depth adjustable rig, this is it. Uh, thanks for watching and go get them.